Hello mages, this is my guide to the fire spec for mages, as well as my very first video guide. This guide is accurate as of the 5.0.5 patch. You can view any patch changes in subsequent videos, as well as on my guide on the battle.net forums. It's also slightly watered down compared to my text version, and I provide links in the video description to that actual guide. Today I'll be going over the following items. 1. Talents and Glyphs. 2. Stats and Reforging. 3. Single Target Rotation and AoE Damage. I cover other topics, but they are found in my actual guide. In Mr. Pandaria, many of the previous talents on the fire spec have either been removed, changed the passive buffs and spells, molded into other existing abilities, or are available to all the mage specs. The new talent system in MOP has six tiers, regardless of your spec, with each tier allowing one choice among a few similar talents. I want to say that there are no cookie cutter specs anymore for many fights. If you want the most optimal setup for your mage, you will be switching around some talents throughout the raid. Tier 1. Presence of Mind. It works the same as it did in Cataclysm. It makes your next spell with a casting time of less than 10 seconds and an instant cast. This is the best talent for tank and spank fights, but falls behind on fights involving more movement. So you will almost never be taking this talent in reality. Scorch. This will be best to take on most encounters involving moderate to heavy movement, and is especially useful since it can contribute crits towards heating up, as well as ignites. Ice Flows allows you to cast up to two spells, each having less than four second cast times while moving. This talent is most useful for fights with fairly light movement, but compared to the other two talents, and the fights you would take those for, you probably won't be taking the ice flows too often. Tier 2 Temporal Shield Very useful for situations where a lot of damage is dealt over a relatively short time span. Blazing Speed It can give some nice movement speed. It's very useful for fights involving a lot of movement, but if those fights also have a ton of damage going out to the raid, then it depends on whether or not your healers can handle the going damage. It also requires that you take damage equal to 2% of your health in order for this effect to be activated. So if you don't take much damage, you can't really activate it. Ice Barrier. This talent is best for damage dealt over longer periods of time, and will probably be used the most among the mage specs. Tier 3. Ring of Frost. This talent has no DPS value, but it's useful for situations requiring CC, such as in dungeons or you have to CC ads that a tank is kiting. Ice Ward? It should not... It's the same thing as Ring of Frost, basically, but it's more restrictive, so you don't want to take it. Frost Draw? It's only useful for freezing non-elite mobs, and in a raid environment on a boss, that almost never happens. Tier 4. Greater Invisibility. This talent is best used if you need to cheese some mechanic that would otherwise qu kill you, since it reduces damage taken by 90%. Otherwise, you don't really want to use it in most fights. Cauterize. It is upgraded from the previous version of Cauterize and Cataclysm. It's pretty much mandatory for the majority of raid encounters, because if you die, it restores you back to 50% health, and you take damage over time for several seconds, but you can still live through that. So it's basically a free jail ticket, if you will. However, it's also weaker than the Cataclysm version in that you can only take damage equal to double your given health once you actually reach zero health. So you can't use it to really cheese mechanics anymore. Cold Snap, you should almost never take that for raids. Tier 5. This tier has the three bombs, and all three of them are virtually equal in single target damage. So you can take whichever one you want, if you're talking about a tank and spank sort of fight. Nether, Nether Tempest. 
It lasts for 12 seconds, and each time this dot ticks, it'll do 50% of that damage to one random target within 10 yards. This dot can be put on any amount of targets, and is best used for encounters involving one to two enemies, whether they're on top of each other, or if you have a bunch of, like, mobs spread out, but there's only one or two mobs in each group. Living Bomb. A dot that lasts for 12 seconds has a 1 second global cooldown regardless of haste, and once it reaches its final tick, deals explosion damage to all enemies within 10 yards. Functions differently than it did in Cataclysm, as in if you re refresh it between the second to last tick and the penultimate tick, it replicates the explosion effect, so it's no longer necessary to let the dot fall off. It's best to use for 3 to 5 enemies, or groups of 3 to 5 enemies. Frost Bomb. It explodes after 5 seconds, dealing massive damage to its target, as well as half of that damage as AoE damage to everything. It deals no dot damage before the explosion, and it has an initial 10 second cooldown, but both the duration and cooldown can be reduced by haste. It's also impossible to refresh this bomb before it falls off, so we'll just reapply it once it comes off of cooldown. It's the best bomb to use for fights having more than 6 enemies. If you have the glyph of Fire Blast, then Infernal Blast and Fire Blast, when used, they'll basically, they each have different effects. Nether Tempest will do that 50% damage instantly as AoE damage. Living Bomb will be spread up to three targets, and Frost Bomb does its AoE explosion instantly. Tier 6. All three of these choices completely depend on the encounter at hand, and each partially changes the Fire Mage playstyle. Assuming a patchwork style fight with periodic damage going out to the raid group, invocation pulls ahead of the other two talents, though the difference isn't that remarkable enough for some people to really care based on the fun factor of invocation. In virtually all of the tier 14 raid bosses, Rune of Power isn't really a viable option as the other two talents, so most of the time you'll be choosing between those two other talents. Invocation. This talent is best used for encounters requiring a surge of damage and whenever there is no periodic rate damage going out. It's also technically the best on most fights involving little to moderate movement. You must complete the evocation cast in order to get the damage increase, so if you're forced to move before the time finishes or get interrupted, then you completely lose out on the damage bonus. This talent reduces the cooldown of evocation to 10 seconds, so you can try again. Be sure to cast the evocation every 40 seconds as well to keep up your damage buff. Rune of Power. You can have two of these runes on the ground at any interval of time. However, you do not gain extra effects by stacking the two runes on top of each other. This talent's only viable for tank and spinning fights, involving l very little movement or fights where you know you'll be moving to it ahead of time, since you can have two of them out at a time. Fights involving lots of movement will mean DPS loss overall. Encanter's Ward is best used for fights involving a lot of movement as well as periodic damage to the raid group. But if there isn't periodic damage going out every 25 or 30 seconds, or some sort of damage they can proc the absorb, then you can't really utilize this talent. It theoretically provides the most burst damage as well, if you can get it to actually proc. Time for glyphs. Prime glyphs have been removed altogether, leaving just major and minor glyphs, the same as in Wrath of the Lich King. Only major glyphs really affect your DPS in any way, so I won't cover the minor glyphs. Major glyphs. Glyph of Combustion increases your, the cooldown, duration, and direct damage all by 100%, meaning it now oh, lasts for, one, for 20 seconds, does 100% more damage on the initial direct damage, and has a 1.5 minute cooldown. 1.5 minute cooldown if you want. This glyph is recommended if it helps to line up better with vulnerability phases. However, if it's possible to squeeze in more than double the amount of combustions in a fight, than you would with the glyph, then it's a good 
idea to leave it unglyphed, unless there's some sort of vulnerability phase every one and a half minutes or so. Glyph of Fire Blast. It's highly recommended for any fight involving multiple enemies, since it basically increases the AoE capabilities of your bombs. Glyph of Evocation causes you to regain 60% of your health, so it's very helpful for self-healing and for your healers. This is the default glyph if there's no others to increase damage. Glyph of Armor, is, it's basically you only take it if you want to reduce the cast time and if you really need the damage reduction capabilities. Glyph of Frostfire Bolt, it decreases the casting time of Frostfire Bolt to match the casting time of Fireball. If you have this glyph, then you can substitute Frostfire Bolt for Fireball if you want, if you care just about the graphical effect. All other glyphs don't really provide meaningful advantages in PvE encounters. Talents are somewhat the same as talents are, in that you can switch them several times throughout a raid. Alright, time to go over your, your stats. Intellect is our best stat, period. It increases the amount of spell power we have, which in turn makes our spells hit harder, and converts into spell critical hit, or just crit rating. This stat should be sought out whenever possible through enchants. Gemming it's not as good anymore, and I'll go over that later. Spell power. It makes our spells hit harder. A very useful stat, but it can only really be acquired through trinkets and weapons, and from intellect. It cannot be reforged for. Hit. Hit is the best secondary stat you can actually acquire through gemming and reforging. A naked level 90 player will have an 85% chance to hit a boss level mob, that meaning you need 15% hit to get hit capped so you always hit your enemy. In this expansion, the hit cap is 5100 hit in order to be hit capped, or 15%. Crit. Whenever a spell crits, it does double damage to a target, and in obtaining crit rating increases the chances of obtaining critical hits. This stat is always viable to a fire mage, especially for obtaining juicy combustions and getting more instant cast pyroblasts. Crit is very useful for the way our mechanics operate. Later in the expansion, it'll be equal to haste, but right now crit definitely outweighs it. Haste. Haste serves two stat purposes as a stat. It decreases the casting time on all your spells with cast times associated with them, meaning more casts within the same time span, as well as reducing the time on a global cooldown, but can only be reduced to one second. Also, in discrete amounts, haste can add more ticks to a dot within the same dot duration. So at certain, only at certain values of haste, you can add extra ticks to your dots, so basically your mage bombs and your combustion and pyroblast dot. The DPS value of haste increases as you reach these haste breakpoints, but it's best not to worry about them unless you're very close to them or if you're into min-maxing. Mastery. Our mastery has been remodeled from the Cataclysm version. Now our mastery is the ignite dot a dot that is put on the target with 12% of the damage of the spell that applied it. Ignite is put on a target after Fireball, Frost Fireball, Scorch, Pyroblast, and Infernal Blast do damage. So it's just damage, not it doesn't require crit anymore. Obtaining more mastery rating increases the percent of damage the dot derives from the spell that applied it. It's a good stat to have, but it's currently not as good as crit or haste. Too long didn't read. For secondary stats, you want hit, and then crit, and then haste, and then mastery. Alright, I'm gonna go briefly over reforging. You can convert 
of one secondary stat on your gear and convert it into another stat that's currently not on that piece of gear. Usually you'll want to reforge your at least one in stat in the hit in order to reach the hit cap. Now to get to the moment that you people actually care about in this guide, your single target rotation. Fire Mage is actually more of a priority system than a rotation. One of the main changes from the Cataclysm priority system, if you played then, is that Flame Orb was removed from the fire spec. The priority system is as follows, with the most important steps being at the top. 1. Combustion, assuming you have high ignite and pyroplast dots. The mage dot is no longer calculated into combustion. Second, you want to use the mirror image, unless you're saving it as a um, aggro dump. 3. Use up your heating up proc if two heating up stacks are present. So basically, if you have a pyroblast proc and you have two crits, then you the Fourth, you want to put up your mage bomb. Fifth, infernal blast if you already have a crit present. Six, you want to use up a pyroblast proc if you don't have any crits. Set, if you've done all those things, spam fireball. One of the things you've probably noticed is that there is no longer hot streak procs. It has been replaced by the mechanic called heating up. You receive one stack of heating up after obtaining one crit, and obtaining another crit in a row will add a new heating up stack, converting the first one into the pyroblast proc you were all familiar with. If possible, as a DPS increase the pre-pull of the pyroblast before your tank actually pulls, but if it's risky then don't do it. You always want to be using Molten Armor for that 5% crit as well. Too long didn't read version of the priority system if you didn't understand it. If, if the conditions are right, you always want to use Combustion first. If you have two stacks of the instant Pyroblast, use one of them. Then you want to refresh your Mage Bomb, whichever one you're currently using. Next, you want to use Infernal Blast if you have a crit present since it guarantees a crit. After that, use up any remaining Pyroblast procs you have, and then spam Fireball as a filler. Remember that it's important to maintain high upkeep on your bombs, because they each now apply Pyromaniac, which increases the damage of Fireball, Pyroblast, Infernal Blast, and Frostfire Bolt by all by 10%. If you choose the Fire Spec, Infernal Blast replaces Fire Blast, which is a guaranteed crit. One thing I definitely want to go over as a Fire Mage is Combustion, since there's usually confusion as your big cooldown. Combustion is a unique dot in that it takes a snapshot of the current Ignite and Pyroblast dots on the target, taking any haste and intellect procs into account. Remember that Mage Bombs are no longer taken into account calculating this damage. Then it adds up the DPS values of each of those dots and creates a new dot that ticks once every 10 seconds or 20 seconds of glyph, each tick dealing the same amount of damage as all those DPS values combined. Combustion is neat in that it can essentially double dip. So for mechanics involving more damage on target, not only the dots composing combustion will be stronger, but once the combustion dot is created, it too takes advantage in that percentage increased after already taking into account the supercharged dots that composed it. Remember that Ignite no longer requires crits to be applied to a target, just damage. So be extra careful as to keeping track of when you get Ignites and applied by crit. Especially since Ignite can now stack, by the way, which means no more Ignites munching. AoE damage. For fights involving 3 to 5 enemies, you'll want to have Living Bomb as your bomb choice. For more than 5 enemies, or 5 enemies, you'll want to use Frost Bomb. You'll also want to keep Flame Strike on the ground, and reapply it when necessary. 
One of the main changes to our AoE that you'll notice is that our dots, basically Living Bomb, Combustion, and Pyroblast, can only be spread to three maximum targets. This significantly reduces the hold Fire Mage has had on AoE power and Cataclysm. Remember that Infernal Blast, when used, will also activate the AoE power of whatever bomb you're using. Too long didn't read. 1. Keep up your Mage Bomb and activate its effect through Infernal Blast as well as using it to spread dots. 2. Cast Flame Strike on the area of enemies. 3. Continue with your single target rotation until one of the above steps becomes available. For 6 or more enemies, you only want to maintain your Mage Bombs, Flame Strike the ground, and then use either Blizzard or Arcane Explosion, whichever one you prefer, because they're essentially equal in, in damage over time. Depending on the situation and the bomb of choice, you may also be able to multi-dot, such as applying Nether Tempest on both targets when two targets are present. Whenever a combustion is cast on your target, the cooldown on Infernal Blast instantly resets, so this makes it even easier to spread your dots. Thanks for watching my video. I cannot torrent on my college campus any video editing software, so you're stuck with a video containing little special effects. If you have any questions concerning the fire spec, or about some of the theory crafting involved in the spec, or any general questions, feel free to ask via comments on this YouTube video or my channel, or on my guide on battle.net. You could send me personal messages on YouTube, or you can even in-game messages if you want.